Hi, and welcome to Crafts with Ash. My name's Ashley, and today I'm gonna be sharing some great St. Patrick tiered tray ideas. Now, some of them are so simple, I wouldn't even call them DIYs. They are just hacks. But this is for the person who really doesn't wanna go all out decorating for St. Patrick's, but maybe just wants to do a tiered tray. And today, I'm gonna be styling this little tiered tray from the Target dollar spot that I got for $5. I absolutely loved it, but it was a challenge because it is small. So, if you wanna see how I styled it, continue to watch. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, then hop on over to Facebook and Instagram and give me a like and follow there. I do a lot of things in my crafting community and I'd love for you to join. All right, let's get started. For my first DIY, I'm gonna be using this little shadow box that I got from the Dollar Tree. And I'm just gonna go ahead and pluck out all of those little flowers. Now they had wire in them, so I just took my wire cutters and pulled them off. And then they did still have hot glue, so I just heated it up with my heat gun and then scraped it off with my razor. Next I flipped the board over and unscrewed the little hook on the back. Then I took out the hanger. Then I gave the whole sign two really good coats of Waverly chalk paint in white. I made sure to get the inside around the edges and on the inside edges as well. I did not worry about the back though. After my tray was all dry, I went ahead and took some Waverly Antique Wax and a makeup sponge and I coated the skinny edges around my sign with that because I wanted it to look like wood stain around the edges. Then to give it that shiplap look, I took my fat ruler that I got from the Dollar Tree and I put it right in the middle and measured two lines. Then I took my black permanent marker and traced over them. Next, I took my makeup sponge again that had the Waverly Antique Wax on it, and I just simply dry brushed in the middle to give it that wood grain look and to make it look rustic and distressed. I dry brushed around the outside edges as well. After my picture was dry, I took this pack of foam shamrocks that I got from the Dollar Tree and I took one of the darker ones. Now I wanted this to be 3D, so I took the this pop-up sticker tape, <laughs> um, 3D sticker tape I guess, that I also got at the Dollar Tree and I cut off two strips and layered them on top of each other to make it just a little bit more 3D. Then I went ahead and put the shamrock down in the middle of the picture. Now I did hot glue this down even though it had adhesive. I just wanted to give it a better hold. Then I decided to add some of that 3D tape to all the sides as well. Next, I took three of these felt white hearts that I had left over from my Valentine's Day supplies and I hot glued them over the shamrock rocks where the leaf would be. Then I took some twine and I made just a simple finger bow and I just wrapped it around my two fingers several times, scrunched it in the middle, and then took a smaller piece of twine and tied it around the middle of my bow. Then I kind of trimmed up the edges and fixed my tails, then hot glued that to the middle of my shamrock. I think this little sign came out so cute. It's perfect and rustic, and that's kind of the look I was going for, although you are gonna see a lot of color on this tiered tray. But I just love how this came out. What do you think?
This next one is an easy Dollar Tree hack. So I took this package of little pot of gold or whatever you want to call it and added a succulent and that was it. So simple. What do you think? In this next DIY, I just grabbed one of these rainbow headbands from the Dollar Tree and I used my wire cutters to get out the little springy parts that are attaching the rainbow to the actual headband. Then I had to use my heat gun to heat up a little bit of that glue so I can get the rest of the wire out. And I did this on both sides until the rainbow was completely free of the headband. Next I took some foam core board that I got from the Dollar Tree and simply traced the rainbow on that. Then I went ahead and cut it out. I originally started using scissors but realized that was not going to work so I used my little knife and that worked so much better. Then I went ahead and hot glued the rainbow to the foam board. After it was glued down, I took my knife again and just cut off any of the foam board that was hanging over. Then I also took my sanding block and just sanded the edges down, that way they weren't so rough. And for the little parts, I actually took a nail file and this worked out great. I sanded it all down until it was nice and smooth all around my rainbow. Next, to make my little rainbow stand, I took two of these wood blocks that I got in a pack from the Dollar Tree, and they were already painted white because I was going to use them for a different project, and I just simply hot glued one down on each end. And there we go, now we have this cute little standing rainbow. What do you think? Now we all know that every tear tray needs a beaded garland, so of course I had to make one. So I took this pack of colored beads that I got from the Dollar Tree. Now this right here might be two packs combined, and I just took out any of the dark green ones. I took out all the different sizes of the dark green ones. Then I took this pack of unfinished wood beads that I got from Amazon, and I can put the link in the description box below, and I took six of those and then painted them with my white Waverly chalk paint. Now the best way that I find to do it is to put it on a skewer and then just kind of roll them around and make sure that I get all the, all the surfaces. I guess there wouldn't be all edges, they're round. <laughs> but um, every single part of the bead, and then I just kind of move them up and down to get the ends, and I just do this to six of the beads. Then I take another six beads, and I take my Waverly wax, and I just stain them. So I just brush them over, and then again, I just move them up and down to make sure that I get the ends as well. Next, I take my twine and add a little hot glue to the end so I can make a pointy edge to make it easier for me to string through. I did blow on it to cool it down before I twisted it with my fingers. That way, obviously, I didn't get burnt. <laughs> then I went ahead and started beading all my beads through. Now, this is the pattern that I followed and it happened to work out perfect with the amount of beads that I had. So I did one white bead, one big green bead, a stained bead, and a little green bead, then back to the white bead. So I just did this until all my beads were strung on.
Once all my beads were on, I tied a little knot on each of my ends so my beads didn't fall off. Next, I decided to make a tassel. So I took my twine and wrapped it long ways around my sanding block several times to get the thickness that I liked. I like using my sanding block because I feel like it's the perfect width to make a tassel. After I was done wrapping, I pulled it off and cut it cut it down. Then I took another piece of twine and tied it to the top part of my tassel. I double knotted it and then I cut all the loops at the bottom and then trimmed them down so they were all even. Next I took one end of my garland and I looped it through the loop of my tassel. Then I put, put that string around the first bead and pulled it really tight and tied it. I know this is hard to explain, so hopefully it, you'll understand by watching it. And then I just trimmed that down to make it look like it was part of the tassel. Now I like to cheat with my beaded garlands and my tassels, so I do use some hot glue to tack it down. And then I ended up putting some hot glue at the top of the tassel and hot glued it to the bead. That way it didn't move around. Next, I took this pack of shamrock filler, I guess, um, and I took one of the bigger shamrocks and simply just hot glued the other end of my twine to that. And I made sure that the bead was right on top of the shamrock, that way it laid flat. I absolutely love how this came out. I think it's so cute, and and it's not too long, so which is perfect because this tray is not that big. <laughs> but what do you think? For our next DIY, I used these rub-on letters from the Dollar Tree, and I absolutely love these. And I went with gold because, of course, St. Patrick's Day just reminds me of gold. <laughs> and then I grabbed this jar that I actually used for a different DIY, but I'm going to use the other side of it. So I opened my package and cut out all my letters first, and I'm spelling out the word lucky. So then I turned my jar around and I placed each letter how I want it. Now here's a tip, once you put it down, there's no getting it back up. So make sure that you have it where you want it before you take the backing off and place it down on your jar. To make the positioning a little easier, I make sure to cut down the white around each letter as far as I can. That way it lines up a little better and you don't have a lot of excess. Once all of my letters were placed where I liked them, I went ahead and took a craft stick and just lightly rubbed them on. To fill my jar, I'm using this gold shred that I got from the Dollar Tree a long, long, long time ago. And I just put some on the bottom, and then I took that filler, like that vase filler or whatever you want to call it, like those green shamrocks, those foam ones, and some gold coins and just filled it up. Now I did make sure that the green shamrocks were behind my word more, that way obviously it doesn't run into the gold, <laughs> so I kind of arranged them. Next I took some decals and I put them on the jar and then I took some twine and I wrapped it around the lip of the jar, tied it in the back and then just wrapped and wrapped and wrapped until I had the thickness that I liked and then I tied it off in the back and that completed this little jar for my tiered tray. 
I love making little things like this because it's good fillers for any bare spots and it's great for layering too. And how simple was that? I absolutely love these rub-on letters from the Dollar Tree. But what do you think? For our last one, this is a great hack that you can use. I picked up this cute little gnome from the Dollar Tree and purposely got the green one, then just put a little window decal of a shamrock on it, and that was it. So simple. What do you think? Alright, now it's time to put together our tray. I started off with this Ray Dunn Over the Rainbow mug and topper and I just got it and I absolutely love it. Then I've been using these thick wood rounds as risers so I stuck that behind the mug. Then I took our little succulent and stuck that on top of the riser. Next, I took this little green truck that I got from the Target Dollar Spot for $3 and stuck that right in front of the riser to kind of hide it a little bit. Then moving down to the bottom, I put my wood bead garland right in the middle. I knew I'd have to move it around, but that's just where I put it for now. I like to put that down so I can work around it. And then I took that little shamrock sign that I made and put it on one side of my tray in the back. Next, I took that little lucky jar with the fillers and I put that next to my little sign. After that, I took our little rainbow stand and stuck that right in front of my little lucky jar. And then I took my gnome and put that next to the cloud of my rainbow. After that, I took this little pot and I had hot glued a decal right on the front. Then I put some foam floral blocks inside of it and then took these three foam gold coins that came in that filler package and just arranged them so it looked like some gold coins were peeking out and then I placed it in front of the rainbow. Now I did go back and kind of fix things up, move things around and I absolutely love how this came out. I also used some little accessories to fill in any spots that were bare. I think that this is cute and festive and just enough for St. Patrick's Day. What do you think? I want to thank you for watching my video today. I hope that you got a lot of great ideas and hack ideas that you can use on your next tier tray. If you haven't done so already, please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit that little notification bell. That way you're notified anytime I upload a new video. And if you loved what you saw today, please give my video a thumbs up. It really helps my channel to grow. Then hop on over to Facebook and Instagram and give me a like and follow there. Until we meet again, I'll craft with you soon. Bye!